Hi and welcome to the watercolor part of our painting series. By now you will have tried your soft, your oil pastels and you will be able to really start to understand color and getting in the nitty gritty of painting, helping you to understand paint more. So one of the trickier ones people find is watercolor. I am not known as a watercolor painter but I use it quite a lot and especially for commissions. It's a really fun one. I find it's the most gentle of all the painting um, mediums and it is one that I really think you should try. So there's a few, these are your top tips this video of what uh, to buy and the different type. It can be quite overwhelming whenever you go to start working with watercolor because sometimes with acrylic it's a lot more straightforward because you buy tubes of paint and you buy canvas but with watercolor there's variations of things so let's get started. Let's start with the paper. This is, I actually got a full dollar Rowney set so this is one of the um, little pads that I use. What I would use this tiny sketch pad for is if I'm doing a larger painting, you can't see any of my larger ones now, but a dancer painting, I would do a little fine uh, watercolour on this using that. So I'll do a little skirt for you in a minute of a dancer just to show you how you can really get flair with the watercolour. But what is different about this one is I would not use this for my commissions necessarily because it is relatively thin. What you can do is you can buy large sheets, really large rolled paper. And then what you can do is you can cut that into segments. But you can see how that really varies from this bendy one to there's a lot more. This is a lot more rigid. And the good thing about the rigid ones is that if you revisit it, if you start a painting and then you revisit it, you will have, there will still be a little bit of wet in that. The thing about the, the lighter ones is that they're they're fast drying. That can sometimes aid you too because sometimes you want to just do like a little quick flower and then you want to add a few petals on it and you want to change the colour of the petals. That is where the fast drying is good. But for the purposes of today, we're going to use an in-between one. So it's not just as rigid as this. It's not just as flimsy as this, but it is the 300 GM, which is um, pretty much the heaviest you can get in its, in like book form. So this is uh, the Langton one, okay? So I will put this all in your notes for you. I think that this one is Dollar Rowney, and these sheets are from the art store. I imagine they're probably Dollar Rowney or Windsor, New Windsor Newton as well. But this one is the Langton, and we're going to use that in just a second. So that covers your paper. If you're really, really stuck and you don't even really like watercolour, but you're just humouring me and you're starting this, then if you're stuck using um, just regular paper, which I have on the desk here, like the paper you use in a printer, know that that will curl. Because the thing about watercolour is that it is water. It is based in watercolour, it exudes watercolour, it is all to do with water. So what that does is that really saturates into your page and can make it crumply and your picture will not really work out. It'll curl up and it'll become a little bit useless really. Okay, so brushes. This again is from that set I was telling you about, the Dollar Rowney one. Um, I think it was actually my mum picked up it at like an auction. So that's the other thing. You can pick up lots of these things on the go. Um, I also really like to use this brush, which is for, um, it's a flat brush and it holds the water really well if I'm doing big broad brush strokes on any kind of scenery. That is from the works, which I mentioned in the last one, or just from like a pound shop or something. It is slightly thicker brushes. The thing with uh, watercolour brushes is they're lovely and fine. The hairs on them are very fine, which allows a lot of movement. This one's a little bit thicker, but I like to play with the brushes sometimes. And I'm really bad at um, cleaning them. So you're lucky if one survives as long as this one has. But I really like to use this one with the watercolour because it takes the... The colour on there, it takes the water, it holds it, which means that you get a lot of colour and a lot of depth. However, often you will find when you're working on this size that you will need the finer brushes. I also find using watercolour on any way, any shape or form, I always graduate towards the 
um, or gravitate, sorry, towards the finer ones because the detail, I really love the detail in that. And we're going to do a sunset in a minute, which requires that you have an outline with detail and you can use the little fine brushes for that. So this is a mix of flathead, which are good for the, um, if you're covering any background, they're good for little buildings or blotting in. And then the rounder head, which just, they carry a lot of water really well. And they also just, they're very easy to maneuver if you're doing flowers, if you're doing nice sea shapes of say, uh, um, hydrangea, I can't even speak, uh, a gladiola. If you're doing any sort of flower that has a petal, what you end up doing is you do a nice little C shape, okay? But I'll show you that in a second too. So we've covered the paper, now the brushes. What about the paints? So what I find whenever I'm buying paints for watercolor is, it's not like whenever you start out with acrylics. When you start with acrylics, often you'll find the primary colors. So you'll have red, you'll have blue, you'll have yellow. Sometimes I'll throw in a real stark, it's called a hooker's green, or um, there'll be uh, a black and a white. With watercolor, I find that beginner sets even have a lot more body to them. So you'll see this is one that I picked up for you in that little set that I talked about. And look already how there's a lot more to that. There are a few different variations of green. There are a few different variations of blue, which is nice for you too. And they will last a really long time. So this is a good set to begin with, the Dollar Rowney. And these are the tubes. What you might have though is something a bit more like this. So you have little blocks and you can buy these blocks separately. What they are, they're just condensed, a bit like the oil bars that we were using in the last one. It's whenever the paint is taken right down and it's solidified. That's what this is. These are really nice to work with. Um, they're a lot more creamier than what you would find um, with when you're working with. In schools, they have the little Reeve set, which is a long, skinny set, and you open it up and it's very chalky. They have a chalky feel about them. These don't. These are lovely and creamy and um, they're weighty as well. So whenever you put them onto the page, you can get a nice strong color. As you can see, these are little colors that I've added in myself. They are um, like a blue and a brown and a white because no matter um, what, I always find white, I gravitate towards white as well. White and black, they're just really nice finishers and they're what adds a richness to any piece that you make. So I would encourage you to get a white at least in your little blocks or over here, but also use it sparingly. And now, what I want you to talk about now is where you mix them. So we've covered the paper, we've covered the brushes, we've covered the paints, and what about the mixing tray? So this lifts out of here, okay? And you will see that I still have paint on that, which is really good start for me to show you. I'm going to just use one of the round brushes. And we have water. So you'll have to have water to start. So I'm going to get that really nice and wet. People forget that watercolor, you're meant to readjust and keep adding in your water. These colors here, I have kept on this. I didn't clean this because the lovely thing about them is you can revisit. Look at that lovely baby pink that I was able to achieve before. I'm gonna dip again. And I'm just bringing it back to life. You do not get the same thing with acrylics. They get a skin on them. Yes, you can go back and you can get a little bit of mugginess as I talk about with them, but not like this. These are still strong. They are still as valuable as what they were the first time around, okay? So this is about a month since I last used this color, but I love this color. Those C shapes when you're doing any form of flowers or petals, okay? So let's just do a few little flowers. A little petals. There's a nice body of paint in that, okay? And we're gonna do a nice C shape. Okay, and then we're gonna do um, a few little dots up at the top here. And we're gonna do another C shape underneath. See that, how it's drawing up, how strong that color is? I'm gonna add in a little bit of water and go back and revisit it again. Whenever you're applying watercolor, you will find that it really can run. Yeah, often you'll end up doing watercolor flat, but I like this little easel whenever I'm working on those fine pieces. And because, yes, it's quite flimsy, but it still holds a lot of the color here, so that's why I like to use this one. So you can dip a little bit of water off but again, we're gonna just add in another C shape here, okay? 
And what you're doing is you're starting the water, the color at one side, and then you're just drawing it down and leaning into the brush so that you start to get real movement. Okay, and we're gonna add up another one here. We're gonna maybe put a little petal that has fallen. See there, my brush is a little bit dry, so keep revisiting your water. Keep loading up your brush. And then you can start to really start to enjoy it. So there's a little few of the petals. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip in and get a slightly bigger brush. Okay. And then we're going to we're going to fill in some of these. You're really just filling in. What I do say to people is, if you're doing like this type of flower, or you're doing say um, a pineapple or a piece of fruit, where you have the, the apple and you have a little stalk on it, leave a gap. So I will show you that now. See the way I've left a gap there? Okay, and I'm just gonna fill this in a little bit more so we get a nice, there's a little bit of blue left over on my brush from last time. So that's why we're getting a little bit of slightly different color. Let's see. If you wanna draw that pink back in, that color back in, bring in It's a bit like a peony, but it's also just a bit like a mushroom. But that's just to show you the different techniques. Now let's, maybe we'll do a little bit of orange. This is where I get carried away and I want to do. So this is where you can mix them, okay? This is another one which is quite good, especially if you have the tubes. So let's put a little bit of the tube in here. So again, you need so little. Well, you will find whenever we use our oils and we use palette knives, we use a lot of paint. For this, you do not need a lot of paint. We're gonna use a little bit of the, we need to pierce this, a little bit of the yellow, more yellow than red. And then we're gonna wet our brush and we're gonna mix. So there you're already using, that's a very, we've mixed in and we have our orange there. So we talk about grades when we talk about paint. This is a, a heavier grade, a series. There's different series of them. There's series one, two, three, four, five, and they can go on. But whenever we're working with watercolor like that, um, kind of your series doesn't really matter as much because you can get such a full body with it. But whenever you're using acrylics and oils, the body really is significant because the body is whether it holds that color really strong, um, but with watercolor, you can really play so much with it that it doesn't matter to the same extent. So we have used two different series. I'm trying to think what series this one is. It's a lemon yellow and the red. What that has done is given me a really runny consistency. And I'm now going to use my, my little white one. You know I love white. So white goes into the other tray. That's the good thing about these. Again, you can pick those up in the works um, or online. They sell them in a couple of packs normally. And they're really handy because they keep them in these little sections. And again, as I said to you, you can have use of one whole section whenever you're doing your first watercolor. Then you can leave those in there and then can use your other side for the next layer, but revisit so that you have this overall tonal value. I talk about that in the pastels piece. Once you introduce colors that are similar or they carry on one side and the other, it's much easier in the viewer's eyes. It's a lovely way for them to really see the harmony between colors. So don't ignore your palette from one day to the next. I'm gonna just go straight in there using the paint that's on my brush. Now there's a lot more tackiness with this than there is with the, um, I'm gonna bring a little bit more color in, than there is with the block colors. Okay, there's a real peachy color. Again, don't be afraid to, to mix your colors into your water. 
We're going to just really add in some nice strokes of color. And there it gets actually, you just have to constantly remember to add water to your brush. Okay, and we're going to put a few little dots up here. And then we're going to revisit our pink. And as I was saying to you, look, you can see that that's already starting to, um, starting to crease a little bit, starting to kink. Um, but for the purposes of this, we're okay. So let's go for an even finer brush, okay? Going for a nice fine one, and I'm revisiting my pink. And what we're doing is we're gonna just fill in a few little dots. We're gonna outline here. The thing with peonies is, they just are layer upon layer, upon layer, upon layer. So, Now we can revisit that one in a second, okay? It looks just a little bit like a whirlwind right now. What I want to show you now is whenever you use a really fine brush, what you can also do is use nice little pen work if you decide to do something like that. This is the black that I already had on here from last time. And look at how I'm really loading that up, really loading up my brush. And I'm just gonna do an outline of my name. Keep your brush nice and wet. Look at that, isn't that nice? And what you can do is you can add in your nice thick parts here. So you're doing a little bit of nearly like calligraphy. But look at the strength in that. Look at how there, that just carries so well with the black. And if you're doing anything, I was saying there about the blending. Okay, so if you were to do, um, a, say it is like a little pineapple, which it wouldn't be black or anything anyway. But if you were to do something that is a, um, has little gaps in it, what I like people, ten people to do is, so say there's your little block, okay. I'm going to fill that in using our water. So if you want to do anything on top of that, I would advise that you use a little bit of a gap because otherwise it bleeds. It bleeds into the other um, color and you don't really want that to happen. So using little gaps, or if you were doing, like I was saying about the pineapple, we could try and do a little piece of fruit actually. We could do our apple now. So if I'm doing an apple, I'm just gonna go straight for the color that's in here which is this one. I'm going to do my base layer with it. I'm going to keep wetting the brush. If I want, I can carry it over here. That's what I can advise, I would advise you to do, is if you want to just keep it over here, it has its own little area. And then we're just going to do our apple. So say the apple is like this. And then we're going to use um, a thicker brush to get like, look, I am really not precious about getting that nice and wet. Some people are very tidy. I am not, as you probably noticed when it comes to art work. Okay, so say we do this and we leave a nice little piece for a shiny bit there. We're going to add in a little bit of our orange because there's always lots of colors on an apple too. That's probably a bit... A two orange so I'm going back I'm revisiting our red here I'm just gonna bring that back in okay so what you would do is you would have so there's our tiny brush yep yeah, here we go and I'm going straight for say the little brown of the stalk okay what I would advise you to do is leave a little gap so that there is they don't touch into each other. The same with the leaf. Say there's a leaf on that little, um, on our apple here. So say it goes up. Um, 
leaving tiny spaces, tiny gaps in the work so that there is this enough for it to breathe, but not enough for it to blend, okay? So enough for it to breathe, not enough for it to blend. I'm gonna go for a little bit of yellow with our leaf here. And I'm just gonna bring that into it. You have to remember that watercolor is very forgiving. Watercolor is one of those ones that you really can revisit and play with and enjoy and not get too uptight about, okay? Because once you start to play with it a little bit and you add in little details and little depth areas, then you will start to see that it is, you can really play with it a lot more than you can with some other paints, maybe with acrylic, because um, like look at there, everything kind of enhances what it is. So we're looking at light and shade really whenever we're starting to do this here. But look at how I can just play with any color that I'm adding on. So I would encourage you to do the same. Really decide that you're gonna tackle it and enjoy it. So let's go straight for white from the tube when we're gonna put that over at the side. And I want you to see how, um, what it's like whenever you put wet on wet, which is what we were talking about there. So there's wet already here. We're gonna add some wet on wet and then we're gonna fill that into the dry bit. Look at that, you can start to really see it come to life a little bit more. Where's our other brush? So as you can see now, I've got one, two, three, four, five brushes. So this is all for just our playing bit too. This isn't even our, our sunset, which we're gonna do. But that's what I want you to do. I want you to take a page. I want you to do some lettering so you get that real control using a fine brush. I want you to do this, which was gonna be a peony, but it's maybe we can revisit that um, before we start our sunset when it dries a little. Here's a little apple. Maybe do a little pineapple. Maybe do a little glass of water or something. I can maybe chart to do that now actually for us. Um, I'm gonna get a real dark bit in there. Okay, maybe put a little shadow in there. Okay. And why don't we do that little glass I was talking about there. So we'll go for some blue. I've got my blue here. Nice strong blue. And then we also have our liquid blue. So we can mix those. Or you can go straight from your, your palette for this bit here in particular. These are all just colors I'm just using because I have them. Um, and because I like to use as much colors as possible. Color is my world. So we'll maybe do this little cup that's sitting here, which has our brushes in it, okay? So we're gonna do our little body here. Look, there's you using your fine brush again. I'm bringing it down. And then the body of the glass, the rim of the glass. Okay, so if you were to do your watercolor now, right? Look at how I can really just use a wet brush and draw that color out. I'm using the side of the brush more now. We're gonna bring it back up in there as well. Look at how you start to get that, um, that real body on the, what you can see here. So I'll do it a little bit darker so you can also see. So basically outline. And then the body of the glass. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna clean your brush gonna use whatever water is on the brush. Use the side of the brush, that's your wet on wet. Look at that, look how it just carries down. Now the only thing is I have a little bit too much there. That's gonna really, look at, you can see how you can draw, look how it's bleeding back up. You can bleed across. It is like magic, that is what I mean. Really embrace it, really play with that. You've already got your hands dirty with the, the oil pastels and the oil bars. This is your time to get a little bit more um, precise. And although here I'm not showing precise in the bit, there we go, we'll put a little shadow with that as well. So forgiving, so, so forgiving. So there we go, adding in more, keeping it really, really crystal clear. Let's make the base a little bit better. Can bring up a little black from here, black color. 
There we go, that's our crystal clear water as well. So there you have it, that's our little techniques. What I want you to do now is to just think through that. So what paper are you going to use? I will have it written down, whether you wanna go straight for this paper, which is definitely good for experimenting, and it's definitely a good starter. Whether you wanna go for the, the heavyweight pad, which is like this, and it still is, that's the 300 GM, yeah? Uh, or whether you want to go straight for a piece of card. I think it's maybe about five pounds to have a big roll like that and you can cut it into different sections. You can crisscross it off and start to do little sections where you really play with the different techniques that we have. Other things I want to show you just before we finish up is you're going to need it for the next bit, which is that big flat brush. Now I will use a smaller brush than this um, for the next video, but load that up, okay? Load, look, I'm just loading that up with water, tapping it off. And I'm gonna go for this nice blue that we have here, okay? More water than paint is what we have. And this is just to show you the flat brush technique. So look at that. Draw it, draw it down. Start it, draw it down. Look at how well that carries. At this stage, I would say that the, the heavier your paper, the better. Especially if we're doing this. We're going to be doing this for our sunset, covering a lot of our sky. The feeling of that is so the feeling of that is the feeling of that is so nice because it really is that very transparent, easy flow. Unlike the oil bars, where I can see it just sitting over there, they're thick and we're right in the middle of it. This is your time to really get fine and get specific and think about the brushes that you need. Think about whether you want to have the little block paints or whether you want to go for a starter pack of the little, um, the little liquid paints. And think about your paper. Think about your little mixing tray. Often you will get one if you buy a little pack like this or if you buy a little starter pack you can get one of these these are t these are going to last for a very long time they're plastic they hold it which means there's no waste so there you have it that is the start of our watercolors i cannot wait to do our real tutorial tutorial which is in the next video i will see you there